I think, can't you avoid looking to your partner's thoughts and questions? Because they, you might be coming to your life with a long bunch of people. They'll be in heaven all the time. Do they to be hope you are there? Could you? Could you? Would you? In a relationship, could you do that? Yeah. It's important, ladies and gentlemen, as we engage in a relationship, that you develop a set of criteria, that you develop a set of uh, 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 information and rules that you go by in a relationship. Yeah. And what happens all too more often than not, when we get a sense of uncertainty, when we get a sense of doubt in reference to our partner in our relationship, we have a tendency to look to the phone. You know? Where is this? Where's this phone? Where is this cell phone? Where's that mobile phone? I, I, he's looking, he's looking. And you go get it and you rumble through it. Where's your phone? Yeah, I, I can tell you what you do. Where, where, where's your phone, man? Where's your phone? Yeah. Okay. People that are unsure, people that are doubtful, people that have negative mindset, that's who does it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to examine why, how should you avoid looking through your partner's fault? Cause a lot of problems, man. yeah. But at the other, on the other side of that token, it could show you some what information that could set you free, <laughs> free from doubt, free from ignorance, yeah, free from uncertainty. You know, don't you want to be free? Everybody want to be. I want to be free <laughs> in my relationship, on my job, in my home, in my church. In my community, I want to be free. You know, what I'm everybody want to be free. So, you know, what's the best way to get free? Is it is the best way to get you free to, to looking at cell phone? Where's your cell phone? Where's your cell phone? Where's it at? I know, I know she's lying. I know he's lying. Where's it at? You know, is that the way? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? We're gonna look at this. All right, but they, hey, guess what, y'all? Today is Veterans Day. Today is Veterans Day. And we got our veteran on the screen like a sex machine. Markel Winfield just popped in. I'm going to get him in the screen right now. Markel, how you doing today, my brother? What's going on, Bobby D? How you doing today? Good, man. Doing good. Good to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Markel Winfield with us today. Today is Friday. You know, we have our veteran specialist, Markel Winfield, come on and give us a few, a few information about veterans, what's going on, things that he feels important we should know. And yeah, also, he talks about world, world travel. Well, so I'm going to introduce introduce you. I'm going to welcome Markel Wingfield to the show. Mark, what's got for us today? Good afternoon. How's everybody out there doing today? So, um, I don't know how much you guys keep up with the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, but they did a report back on December seventh, twenty twenty two. And the CBO is basically a nonpartisan group that was passed in a bill back in 1974. They were enacted in 1975. And what they do is they research entitlements and benefits to see where the government can save money and decrease the deficit, our current deficit. Well, in the new proposal, now let me, let me back up a little bit. In 2015, they came up with a proposal that did away with TDIU, which is total disability due to un individual unemployability, which is a benefit that government that veterans receive who are not at the 100 percent number. So if you're at least 60 percent up to 90 percent, the government, based upon your disabilities, can grant you a 100 percent payment, even though you haven't reached it through TDIU. The Congressional Budget Office proposed that they get rid of TDIU when they turn retirement age of 67. Now, that would have been a very unpopular bill back in 2015. So most politicians are not going to talk about it. The House is not going to bring it to the floor. Senators are not going to bring it to the floor because a lot of those people want to be reelected. They don't want to say anything negative. But as the deficit has increased now, because that was what, eight years ago? The deficit has skyrocketed since then. OK, Social Security is no longer solvent in 13 years. Social Security payments are going to change if Congress does nothing. So in this new proposal, and I'm not saying this is going to happen right now,
But in this new proposal, they want to now tax veterans benefits as well as get rid of TDIU. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen right now or when it will happen, if it happens. But something's going to happen because they got to get the deficit under control. Not only that, Bobby D, they're looking at taxing churches, something they have never done. That should tell you how bad it is or how bad it has become our deficit in the United States of America. When they start looking at taxing churches, taking disability and taxing it and doing away with a benefit that a lot of veterans depend on, which is TDIU, is getting very serious. OK. Now, with Social Security, guys, and I've talked about this with Bobby D. I don't know how much you all pay attention to it. But in 2035, which is not that long from now, if Congress does nothing, you're going to lose about 35 percent of what you're getting with Social Security right now. So what are you getting two thousand dollars? You can take three hundred and fifty dollars off that two hundred two thousand dollars. That's what's going to happen if they do nothing with Social Security. Now, they were supposed to change all these bills. They were supposed to increase the two hundred dollars and change the way Social Security is calculated because they're using a formula from the 1970s to calculate Social Security. One other thing that has gone unnoticed in the news that a lot of people don't talk about, you know how a lot of seniors only receive Social Security, right? And the Social Security receives sometimes only $600, $900, $1,200 a month. They don't enough to live on in the United States of America. So they get help from EBT, SNAP, food stamps. They get help from that. So that 8.7% increase everybody got that they was excited about, the SNAP, the food stamps that they get went down. A lot of people lost 25 to 30% of the food stamps that they were getting. So what good did that 8.7% do them when they turned around and what they got in the increase, they lost in the food bill. So that little increase they got now got to pay for what they lost on the other side. See, these are things people don't talk about. They don't tell you guys. They just make it sound like everything is wonderful. But that's not the only thing that got cut. A lot of Medicare costs that were supposed to get cut, they got increased. So again, that 8.7% sounded great in December, but the reality for a lot of people who were paying for this stuff, no, it's, it's not as good as they thought it was going to be. And that's normally what happens. And when that's why I tell people, it doesn't matter what they give us. The real number is the one they don't tell the public. They tell you after the fact. They told us 8.7. The economy grew over 12%. So, you know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news coming on, but I'd rather tell you guys the truth than just feed you a bunch of BS and everybody thinks everything is great when it's really not. I think your mic's off, Bobby D. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hello. I can hear you now. Oh, and one last thing I want to say real quick. Yeah, your mic's back off, Bobby D. Uh, one last thing I want to say real quick. And I get this question a lot. Uh, I think sometimes it comes from uh, some of the vets that are in the Philippines. Yo, my screen, Bobby D, is showing that your microphone's off. Okay, now it's back on. How about now? Yeah, it's back on. I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let me know. All right. Hey, one one last thing I want to talk about real quick, and I think it's a lot of um guys in the Philippines that ask this question, or people who are thinking about going to the Philippines that ask this question, and that's about living overseas. I think sometimes, Bobby D, when people watch us, they fantasize about living overseas and the way that we live overseas, they would like to emulate. But I think something that gets looked over is there are certain type of people that can live overseas. It ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody. Because you're leaving your family, you're leaving your friends, you're leaving the life that you had in the United States of America behind. 
that life will never be duplicated in whatever country you decide to go to. Okay. All the, the little things that we never think about when we're in the States, when it comes to, okay, I need help. And I'll just call Frank down the street to come help me. Or I go to cross the street to my neighbor to get them to do this for me. When you move to another country, Frank is no longer across the street. You know, your, your little young cousin is not there to come over and get your mail and do this and that. It doesn't work like that. And there comes a point, because if you read statistics, the majority of people who move to another country leave within the first two years. Because it's not what they thought. You know, through the power of editing and you see me laughing and have a good time. You see Bobby D laughing and have a good time. Uh, people get the wrong idea. One second, Bobby D. Let me grab this real quick. But it's important, man, that you understand what we're talking about as far as CBD and as far as living overseas. That is uh, something that people need to study very, very hard before they make that move. That's why we do these types of videos. That's why we do these types of shows. Huh? Hold on. I don't know why it's low. I... You took something out. Why did you take that out? Hold on, y'all. Excuse me. No, I'm back. I'm back. I'll just right. say this, okay? Because it's, it's not what everybody thinks it is. No, it's not. It's not. It's totally different. And you'll never know unless you try But I always tell people you need to do your homework before you get out in the water. You know, because you, you're going to either sink or you're going to swim, you know, either one or the other. And if you haven't done your homework properly, if you don't have the right mentality, the right, right mindset, don't get out. Don't get out there until you're strong enough to stand up on your own. Because it, it's a mental, it is a mental uh, issue when you're away from your environment, your home. You got it all weighs on you, all that stuff, because you're about worrying about your people at home. You're not there. Then you got to worry about how you got to take care of yourself here. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, difficult situation to be in. And you only have you. Most of the time, you, you're the only one there in a foreign country. Maybe you have a girlfriend or whatever. But still, it's on, everything is revolved around you. You have you can call on and you say, I need this, I need that. Now, you on your own, buddy. So you got to prepare. You, know, you got to be independent. And uh, that's what a lot of people fail to do when they come. They just want to look at the excitement of getting here, getting around the women, getting to do this, and I'm going to be free. And I'm you're going to be free to sink or swim. It's up to you. Now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's very, very important that people understand about living overseas. It, it's not all what it seems to be. I mean, no. I have a good life, but I know a ton of other guys that don't have a good life. <laughs> Bobby D, you know I, like I tell people, man, if you financially, because you talk about this all the time, you got to have your money right. You are your only financer in these countries. Nobody, the majority of the people that a lot of people hang around are not going to have that kind of money to help you if there's a problem. You can't just go spend your, all your money in a week, two weeks. Who Who's going to save you there? Ain't nobody that'll save you. Nobody. Nope. It's you and you alone. That's it. You, even if you call your friends and family and call them to help, because it could take time to get money. They may not even have, you know? So you using you up a creek if you ain't got no money. Yeah. So it's important. Don't come out here if you don't have the finances. Don't think you're gonna get a job. Don't think you're gonna you're gonna get all love gonna save us. We're gonna live off love and you know, have some practical plan. You have your money, your finances in order, and then you come out here. You'll be all right. If your finances in order, all the other stuff will fall into place. But the main thing is your finance. Okay. If you don't have that, you're not gonna float well here. And what, what I have found out is when you are a foreign man going to a foreign country, people respect you when you got money. When you got no money, you got no respect from the people you are, are living with. They're like, you come over here with no money? You begging for me? Get away. <laughs> how, how crazy is that, man? Yeah? Don't do it. Get your money ready. Get your money financed. Get yourself capable of living here. Not only do you get your money ready, but get your mind right. It's a mental, uh, it's a mental stress living in a foreign country. Now, I, I've learned to adjust to where I live, but still this mental stress that comes to me every day. Some of the things I don't like out here. I, and I, I've been here a year. Some of the stuff I still I have trouble with, you know? How did the government set up? How they deal with foreigners, you know? I had problems the first part of this year. I was some local trying to act a fool with me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Barfield, you still there? 
Yeah, one second. Okay. Then you'll get the door and let everything in. I had, I had some trouble with some locals trying to act the fool with me, man. Yeah. But Lisa D taught me through what to do and everything. We got it, we got it okay. But uh, I'm telling you, man, you, it's just nothing granted when you're in overseas. Things come up all the time. You never even expect it. And you got to be prepared to deal. If you're the kind of guy that's settled in your ways, and you're thick, you don't like to change, you don't like to, this is, this is all about life here. It's always about something new happening. Yeah. 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 You gonna stand up? You gonna say, hey, what's up? What's up? Who we got here? Come on, son. Ah, ah, who? Wait, bien, bien, guys. Sí, ama y no me alegra muchísimo. I had to let her in. Oh, okay. That's who was knocking on the door. Yeah, that's who's knocking on the door. Oh, you got a cute man. She's really nice there. Beautiful woman. I see why you're there. <laughs> you got something worthwhile being here for. Hey, I've awesome. been with Erica since I've been in the country. Really? Uh, for almost awesome. six years. Yep. Man, since I've awesome. been in the country. That's it, man. The more time you with that individual, the more you're going to discover about her. She's going to discover about you. And then you begin to build a strong bond. That's what I do with this week, five years later, man. And then we, we finally got back. You know, that's the way you do it, Markel. Put the time in. Put the time in for that one individual, and it's going to pay off later on. Because okay? you know how she is. You know how you are. That's awesome. Right. Thank you. Trust me, Bobby. Thank I know. I say something. Do it. I already know how she's going to react. I already that's know right. what she's going to say. I already know <laughs> what the situation is going to be when I get home. So psh, right. it is what it is. Uh, that's it, man. That's it. That's and you can't get no better than that. You want somebody that you trust, that that knows your ways, you know their way, and you could even if you guys change, you adopt your change. That's what you want, man. That's awesome, man. I'm glad you introduced Erica to the show. <laughs> Tell Erica that uh, we we appreciate her showing up on the show. We had an angel in the house, angel in the house, <laughs> all the way from Colombia. Para tu acá. Envidia. Con mucho gusto. Mi amigo, con mucho gusto. Ah. <laughs> but but uh but real talk though, Bobby D, you you right, and, and I'm gonna make a video on my other channel explaining that man being an expat is not the easiest thing, and I don't want to take up a lot of your time talking about this, but being an expat is not the easiest thing when he talks about mental fortitude. This is why I tell a lot of people visit first. Stay a couple of months. See how it is outside of the tourist zone. Don't just go and stay somewhere you wouldn't live when you move there. You need to go somewhere, in my opinion, an area where you're going to actually live to see how it really is. See how it is at night. See how it is during the day. Dogs barking. People making all kind of noise. That may irritate the hell out of you. This is not the States. You don't have soundproof walls. You can hit, look. People get up. You can hear them take every step. You can hear them go to the bathroom. You can hear them if everything that they do. Somebody smoking marijuana. You smell it. You, you, everything you any, every, everything you can imagine that you never get at your house or apartment. You're gonna get it here. Okay, you're gonna see bugs, and, and they're gonna be bugs crawling in your house. You ain't never seen before. Like, what is that? What does it do? <laughs> this is all over the house. You can't get you do it, you get them out, they come right back. Yeah, yeah. If I kill, you hear everything that's happening to the expat, everything right on the head, right there, man. All kind of stuff you never had to experience in where you're coming from, where you're coming from. And then you get out here, you gotta deal with it. And a lot of people can't take that. A lot of people can't take dog bark. I had a guy come out here, man. He said, I can't stand them dog, man. It makes noise all the time. Said, you gotta deal with that, brother. You gotta move on back home. Because everywhere you go, that's the way it is here. Yeah. Crazy. And you know, it seemed like to me that would be a big thing, but that's a big thing for a lot of people, you know. Bobby, you, you might have people who come by 
trying to sell fruit, making all kind of noise. You got people that come by, want to sing songs outside at night. Uh, right. They want to sing songs during the day. They want to fire, shoot fireworks all the time at night. Some people out shooting a gun. You, you got chickens. Somebody got chickens down the street making all kinds of noise. You, you got it all. You got it all. You, there are so many little things that you never think of when you go to a foreign country because it's not a custom in your country. Bobby D spoke about it earlier. Dealing with the government here. Just dealing with paying a bill here, Bobby D. In the United States of America, if I got a bill, anytime I want to pay it, if I want to pay it two, three months in advance, they're going to take the right. money. Here, no. You can't even pay one day in advance. You got to pay the day of. The day of. And even when you pay, sometimes they don't get it right. They'll still say, well, you owe. I just paid you. I got a bill. Here's the receipt. And they got to go get a supervisor. And they got to do it's not like in the States, they look at it, okay, you paid, don't worry about it, go ahead on. Here, right. no. It's a whole different situation, man. And people get so frustrated and they want to compare where they are to the United States. You can't do that. You should understand, when you left the U.S., you left the first world country. You came to a developing country. Okay? You're used to pulling a wheelbarrow. They push the wheelbarrow uphill. Okay? You got to understand <laughs> where you're coming to, man. This is not America. It is so far from America. It's not even close. And you have to adapt. If you don't have patience, and I'm being serious, if you don't have patience when you're talking to people, when you're just conducting business, this ain't going to work for you. If you fly off the handle and cussing every five, yeah, you ain't going to be here long. You will not let, You will not make it long. Somebody going to bust you in the head. <laughs> don't play that stuff out here, man. Now you, you gotta you have to have the right mental attitude and you have to be able to talk to people appropriately. And you have don't talk down in it. That's the worst thing you can do. Thank talk you, Bobby. Somebody, somebody think you hired them, oh, man, they won't take you out. They're gonna find out how much money you got. Yeah. The money don't mean nothing. People won't respect everywhere around it. And and, and <laughs> people here take pride in their country. You yeah, want to compare their country to somewhere else and you, you want to tell them something is better. Then where you are in their country? No, that's a no no. Yeah, you can get out or they'll get you out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's about that was my only thing, Bobby D. And I'm gonna talk about this more in, in, in another video I'm gonna do. But I understand that some people, when they have success overseas, they want to invite everybody to go overseas because they're having success. Everybody right. ain't built the same. Everybody's not built the same way. No. What works for one man may not work for the next. And if your if your money ain't right and it's gonna put you in an area that's not gonna be very conducive to where you came from, you're not gonna make it two weeks there, because all that stuff that they do with all the noise, electricity going out. See, here's the other thing, Bobby. You ain't in a good area. Your electricity gonna go out multiple times during the day, multiple times during the day at night. You ain't got water. Wake up, no water. Wake up, no electricity. Wake up, phone service ain't working. You need to know where you're going when you go to these countries. They don't, they don't take into consideration all of the various little things that can happen to mess them up. They just want, they think everything's going to be just like the U.S. and where they come from, but it's not. I'm glad you mentioned that, Mark, because people need to open their eyes up to the reality of uh, overseas living. It is not everything peaches and cream, like a lot of the beat all would say. I, that's why I try to keep it real with you. I bring the good, the bad, and the ugly. You can see all the sides. And Marco does the same thing. You know, there's some good things that happen here for us. You know, oh, yeah. that's why we're here. But there's some bad stuff too. And we're still here too. You, you got to get to deal with the good and the bad the same way. Keep, keep yourself strong and don't get weak and keep your mind focused. That's all you got to do. And if a lot of time, a lot of time people can't do that. You know, go ahead, Bobby. Bobby D, see, you got a car. You don't have to deal with public transportation. I got a driver. I don't deal with public transportation. People here have no idea what public transportation even look like. The lines are so long. The buses are so crowded. The metros are so crowded. And you somebody that don't like being around a lot of people. You 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 like, oh, don't, don't touch me. Good luck getting on a metro or getting on a bus and ain't nobody touching you. Because I've seen them. They hanging all outside the window. They hanging out the doors. That's how packed it is. Good luck with that. That's why you need to know and you need to have money 
when you come to these countries, you come in and you barely got enough to make it, that means you riding on the bus. You riding in whatever, whatever and any ever to get where you need to go. Or well, you using your feet. He said, feet don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what these Filipinos try to most of them do is hit the feet, throw the feet, you know? So yeah, man. Money. Money helps you in a, in a foreign country. And don't come out here with not enough because you're gonna be crying, trying to get find a way to get back home because you ain't got enough money. But yeah, Mark, y'all, it's been great, man. What else you got for us? That's it. That's it, Bobby D, man. I appreciate okay. you having me on. Hey, thank you. Y'all check on Mark. He said, Congrats to your girlfriend. He said, Congrats. <laughs> regards, regards to your girlfriend. <laughs> what what you want to know? He said, He knows Spanish. She said, Como estas? <laughs> Okay. 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 Well, thank you so much, Markel. Y'all check out Markel's show, uh, Markel's Tech TV, the podcast, Markel's, uh, Markel's TV, the podcast, and Markel's Harvey TV oh. channel. Huh? Before, you, before you go, Bobby D, uh, did you see the latest on the uh, RPMs and the CPM? Because people, they going down. I, I don't know yeah, if you saw that on social media, but, but they're going it, way down. down. I don't know what you Doing, but they're gonna have to bring it find a way to bring it back up because they're gonna lose a lot of people. A lot of people gonna wind up going to TikTok, all these other places, Instagram, you know, and they're gonna their money gonna go down. So they're gonna have to do something, man. I don't know why. You can you understand what's going on with that? Yeah, what happened was, and YouTube kind of explained it. What happened was YouTube was putting videos, were putting ads on videos that these companies didn't want. So like okay. some of these channels that are not exactly family friendly, they right. had, cause you imagine, okay, say you got a channel that's got nothing but girls you showing in the streets and you know what they do. And you got Walmart advertisement on a channel like that. You, you <laughs> that don't work. That don't, don't work. work. Right, right. So the advertisers go, okay, if you're not going to do what we want, we're going to pull our money. Okay. Right. We're pulling all the millions of dollars that we're paying and, and no, we're not going to do that. So that's why YouTube is now canceling a lot of channels. I don't know if you read the policy because they sent everybody email. You cuss within the first seven to eight seconds. You get demonetized. If you're cussing yeah. throughout the video, they're going to demonetize it. If you're showing anything that's blood and guts, they're going to demonetize it. If you're showing anything that's no content that people can massage themselves with, I'll put it that way. They're it. gonna demonetize it, and now they're like getting rid of channels. Yeah, yeah, they, they want to reduce the amount of channels they really don't need so they can get the amount of money to give them to people that the, the good channels that are out there. But uh, I saw that man, and I'm I'm I, I'm good, I'm good. They're cleaning it up, you know, they're cleaning it up a little bit. Not only are they but cleaning they it up, making it more ad advertiser friendly channels out here, what they need. So that makes but it's gonna it's gonna That's hurt why. in the beginning though, Bobby D. It's it's hurting right now in the beginning because them CPM, my CPM is low compared to where it normally is, Bobby D. I was like, ooh, we mine's a little bit low too, but I I don't know. It'll come back up. Sometimes I see no, it before, come like, back up. uh when they did the something they did several years ago by demonetizing and then remember the lady that came out and uh, and uh, shot up all the and went to YouTube headquarters and shot everybody up. Remember that? Years ago? Yeah. It was oh. YouTube did something. I forgot what they did with the monetized. Monetiz oh, they cut a lot of channels out that were being monetized. And this was her only income. She was making big money. It was a foreign lady, too. She was an Asian. You know, Asian American. She went to the YouTube channel, YouTube headquarters in California, and shot it. It was wow. a mass shoot. Shot everybody up. And that's what she said. Why? She cut my money out. Yeah, they demonetized and so ever since then, man, uh, channels, uh, companies been pulling money back, all kind of stuff. And it's getting worse, man. But they'll, I eventually think they'll come back up. What, what's happening right now on YouTube is the short videos. The short videos are going big time. 
Yeah. But that's what I'm trying right. to concentrate on. And that's been picking, picking up my, my viewer account, everything going up. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to look at. That's going to be the future, not only for YouTube, but think, uh, all of these apps are going to have short videos. Long form, long form video is going to be a way of the past. And yeah. I don't know why. That's that's where this industry is headed, short form. So I'm trying to focus on that as much as I can. And then I'll still do the live, of course. But uh, things are changing, man. Things are changing. Like you said, you know, this is your only YouTube is your only income. You in trouble. <laughs> 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 don't rely on hey, if you don't if you don't have corporate sponsors if you don't have a corporate sponsorship some kind of contract and you don't have no other income source but youtube oh this month and next month gonna be rough for you you're gonna be catching it it's okay. all good it's all good. Bye, right, Bobby D. All right, Bobby. Okay, Markel, thank you so much, man. Take care. All right, man. All right. Thank you. See you next time. All right, guys. We thank on thank Markel for showing up today. We uh we invite you to check out his two channels, Markel's TV the podcast and Markel's Hobby Tech Review. Those are two YouTube channels. Check them out, guys. You will not be uh you will not be uh, uh you will be happy and satisfied. Put All right. So let's go back to our topic for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for showing up. We had a few audio problems that got that resolved, and uh, we're back on track. So today we're going to talk about should you avoid looking through your partner's phone. I mean, that is a common phenomenon that happens when people get together. And it usually happens when they are initially uh, hooking up or living together or being boyfriend and girlfriend. Because why? The issue of trust. Do I know him like that? And then I'm going to show you on the back end the issues that cause that lack of trust, that uncertainty, that doubt to play a role in the relationship when it should not be. Okay? So I'm going to show you. I'm going to break this thing down to you. Then when you, when you, you'll see whether it's right or whether it's wrong, whether it's long or whether it's strong, for you to search through your lady's phone book or phone, and for you to search Related for you to search for your man's phone. Where's that phone, guy? Yeah, I know you've been saying, where's that phone, John? I'm going to show you my phone. What phone? I'm going to show you. She's trying to give me the phone, John. How many arguments have you had like that? Hmm? Huh? Uh, that can I show, can you see a show of hands? I know. I got the whole audience like, yeah, man. <laughs> I know. I've had, I've had a few rounds like that. And and, and uh, it's, not, it's not pleasant because the whole background of that conversation is built around what trust or mistrust or misplaced trust okay or 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 a, a breach of of, of, of uh, your uh your breach of your security breach of your uh, how you deal with each other you know it's, it's not good and so we're gonna work that out there. let's go ready all right here's our thumbnail today no hocus pocus just focus focus thumbnail for today here we go See right there Look through the phone. She got your eye about to pop out of here, man. You ever seen somebody like that? You look through your phone and say, what? You looking at other women? What? You talking to five other women? What? You know, the first, first stage of this uh, is that she's shocked. And then now, when you get over the shock, then you get pissed. And after you get over the shock and the piss, then you go in the mode of revenge. You know what I'm saying? You want to get them back. I'm telling you, man, that's what happens. You know, when you have a negative mindset, when you are doubtful, when you are uncertain, when you place a, a set of criteria on your partner that you wouldn't place on yourself, and you go out looking for trouble. That's what she's doing. She's looking at somebody else's phone when she should be looking at her own phone. Somebody need to yell at her and say, look at here, sister. Stay in your lane. Mind your business. <laughs> Stop looking at this phone. You want some trouble? You're going to get some. <laughs> But that's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. You know, stay in your lane. Why should you stay in your lane? Because when you don't stay in your lane, you're showing your negative attitude. You're showing yourself a level of uncertainty. You're showing that you have a level of mistrust. You're showing that you don't trust your partner. And, and I thought that when two people hook up, broke up, and hook up, and shook up, they trust each other or they wouldn't be hooking up, right? Am I right about it? Like they say in church, am I right about it? <laughs> 
proud of it. So let's break this thing down here. Focus, 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 just foul cash, foul focus. Here we go. So we took a look at, uh, we're going to take a look at self sabotaging. Self sabotaging. That's what she's doing. She's sabotaging her own relationship. You know, she's doing it to herself. We're going to take a look at the reason why people play the victim. You're going to play the victim. Johnny, you did this to me. Johnny, you're playing on me. She want to play the victim. They want to take a look at uh, lead on healthy situation. Hmm? I don't know about you, man. I don't want nothing. I don't want to be in a healthy I've been in a, I was in an un, unhealthy situation over 20 years of my life. Can you believe that, man? So you think I want to jump right back into a funky, stinking, rotten, toxic relationship? Huh? No. I don't want to. So I'm going to show you some things that can keep your relationship healthy. I'm going to show you some things that can keep your relationship strong, long. Okay? You with me, G? Let's go. I ain't got time. For, I ain't got time for no doubt people today. I ain't got time for no haters today. Let's run this thing right tight, long. So number one. We're going to talk about number one. Number one is what? Self-sabotage. What we do, man? See? We're looking for trouble. We self, we are sabotaging our own relationship because we are negative. We have a bad mindset. We are doubtful. We are uncertain. So we're going to sabotage the relationship. Instead of us trying to find a way to build it up, we're going to find a way to tear it down. And a lot of people do this. And the reason why they do it, ladies and gentlemen, because they do it sometimes unconsciously. They, they unconsciously do it because of how they were raised. The self-sabotaging behavior. Is detrimental to your relationship. Can you get that? I'm going to say it again. Self-sabotaging behavior is detrimental to your relationship. Do you want to keep your relationship intact, mister? Did you hear what I said? I said, do you want to keep your relationship intact and strong and long? Well, stop self-sabotaging your relationship by looking at your woman's phone book. Lady, stop sabotaging your man by, by looking at his phone book. You want, you want to find some dirt? Look at his phone book. If he want to find some dirt on you, he's going to look at his, your phone book. But you shouldn't be doing that. You want to keep your relationship strong. Don't cause you. Don't, don't uh, stop kill your own relationship. Don't, don't tear your own relationship down. Don't try to find something when there ain't nothing to be found. And that's what happens. The least little thing you see in this out of his phone book that's out of the ordinary for you. What is this, Johnny? I know there's somebody. Johnny, Johnny, what is this, Johnny? Come on, man. You're trying to make something when it ain't nothing. And that's what happens when you look in your man's phone book. And that's what happens when you look in your lady's phone book. You're going to find something. And it's going to be some dirt. And if it ain't dirt, you're going to make it look like dirt. Oh, yeah. Stomping on some heels right now. Let's go. So yeah, uh, uh, it's important, ladies and gentlemen, to understand that when you doubt, when you when you have uncertainty, you're sabotaging your own relationship, and that's a very very bad behavior to have. Hmm? You're 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 uh, uh, trying to uh, take away from your own well-being. You're causing yourself mental uh, stress. You're causing yourself mental anxiety, uncertainty, all that stuff. And you don't have to be that way because you shouldn't be thinking like that. It's about how you're thinking. You know, we do sometimes we do these things consciously. We have a conscious mind to do it, but then an unconscious at the same time. You know, these are self-sabotaging behavior, drug abuse, self-sabotaging. You're hurting yourself by taking drugs, procrastinating. We don't, we do we never do stuff we're supposed to do. We wait to the last minute. All of those are self-sabotaging behavior. Never you participate self. Sabotaging a behavior, you're getting an unhealthy situation in your life and in your relationship. Anything that's unhealthy for you will eventually do what? Go down, decay, and die out or crumb. Okay? Think I'm playing with you? Start looking in your lady's phone book every day. Ladies, start looking in your man's phone book every day. It's going to get worse and worse and worse because you're going to keep finding something when there ain't nothing. You'll make something out of it. Same thing. And then what happens is he's going to get tired of this. Tired of you over the queue and me. That ain't nobody. <laughs> I've been there, man. I've been there. I'm telling you, man. It's not good. Okay? So, number two. Don't know what to do. What to do. Let's go. I ain't playing with y'all. Uh, reason why people play the victim. Okay? 
Today we're looking at, should you avoid looking through your partner's phone? Right? That's our topic for today. Number two, reasons why people pay the bill. That's what happens, man. When you look into your lady's phone book, you're playing a victim. When she looks at your phone book, she's playing a victim, man. And usually people that play the victim are subjects of traumatic childhood. Oh, Lord, that's a big one. I'm going to break that thing down. Yeah, you had a traumatic childhood. And so you don't trust nobody. You, you, every time your daddy called you, he said, come here, Johnny. Bye-bye. Yeah, he did a shit your pie on your face. He said, Daddy, what you hit me for? Because I want to. So you, you're a traumatic. You left with trauma. You never dealt with why and how, and it had an impact on you. So when you deal with other people, same thing. You're expecting them to lower the boom on you anytime. Anytime. Something's going on. Something's going on. Something's going on. Unresolved trauma can lead to negative mental health. Negative thinking. Uncertainty. Doubt, mystery, as we get older. And that's where the, that's the root. This is the root of this type of behavior. That is the root, ladies and gentlemen. It's about how you think, a lack of trust, you know, self doubt, uncertainty. All of these things are, are why people uh, play the victim. And playing the victim is why you looking into the phone book, lady. See that lady right there? She playing the victim. You cheating on me. I know you're cheating on me. Uh, that's a victim mentality. Instead of her saying, he, he cheating on me, she should be saying, my man is so good. He's so faithful. But no, she got the victim mentality. She got the negative mindset. So she's looking for trouble, and she's going to find some trouble. Okay? When you have a negative mindset, ladies and gentlemen, you are wired to react negatively. In psychology, they call it negative bias, negativity bias. Because when, if you think about it, when you look at a TV program or news program, what's the news? When you look at a news program, what's the majority of the news? Negative. And what keeps people glued to a TV channel or program when something's going on? Negative. People are wired to be attracted to what? Negative. If it's something bad, oh, everybody on it. If it's something good, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how we are, man. Think about it. That's just the way people are. In psychology, we call it negative bias, negativity bias. Okay? And that's so understand it. That's, that's what happens. We are wired to react strongly to negative events. Negativity bias, I mentioned it. Never develop healthy way, healthy way to cope. You never, what happened? I told you, when you were a kid, you never got over that childhood trauma. You never got over attachment trauma. What is attachment? Attachment is how you deal with attaching or connecting the individual that you meet. Or in a relationship, attachment. You get a relationship, you don't know how to how to develop the attachment, how to develop that connection, how to develop that relationship, because you have childhood trauma, negativity in your mind, doubt in your mind, lack of trust in your mind, uncertainty in your mind. You, that's what makes you want to play the victim, and that's what makes you want to look at somebody's phone book, see if they're doing it. I know he's doing. I know he. Who needs? Who, who wants that kind of person in their life? You don't need that. And if you if she doing that to you, let her know. Stop it. Are you out? If he's doing that to you, lady, let him know. Look, you don't trust me. I'm out. I'm going to stay up because I don't need this in my life. If you, if you stop this behavior, foolish behavior, oh, I'm out. I don't need that in my life. I don't need you doing that to me. I'm not your child. That's how you talk. Okay? But yeah, it is wrong, man. You shouldn't be doing it. Never develop a healthy relay, healthier way. That's why they're doing all that crazy stuff. Looking at phone book. They don't know how to attach and connect and maintain and grow a loving, caring, sharing relationship. Okay? It's always a better way than looking at somebody's phone book. And then people that do that feel that they have no control. And they play the victim to cope with their lack of trust, their doubt, their negative mindset, and their insensitivity to connecting in a relationship. Relationship is complex, whether you know it or not. You think, well, it's just a we just hook up, hook up, hook up. Well, that's it, we good, we good, we good. No. That's just a one time. A good relationship is forever. It's, it's continuous. And why it's continuous? Because they continue to grow, they continue to know each other, to grow with each other, and to learn how to what? Deal with the situation and the circumstances 
and the situations that arise in their relationship. That's what a good relationship is. But if because of you, mister, you don't know how to cope with attachment. You don't know how to cope with connection. So you got to look in somebody's phone book. Grow up, mister. Yeah, you, Mr. Dowding Thomas, grow up. You know about me. I think she's gonna play on. I'm gonna leave her take a phone, but I'm gonna go on Facebook and see. One more, yeah. Let's go. Number number B, B, uh, G, number three. Right. Uh, leave unhealthy situations. That's what you want to tell you just now. Leave it. If you got to do all that, man, is it worth all of the struggle and the hassle and mental stress and emotional uh, take out on you? Is it worth you doing that? You know, every time you turn around, you got to wonder what she's doing, where she at, who you with, what you eat. Yeah, they don't have trust. That's, well, if we go through this, we we'll find it, that's the main thing. Now, so understand, uh, uh, leave it, man. It's not worth it. You know, looking through the phone is not worth it. It's not healthy. It exhibits negative thinking. It exhibits a lack of trust. It allows you to play the victim. I know some of y'all like to play the victim. <laughs> he gonna hurt me. I'm the one. Why you do that to me? Don't hurt me. Please. You cheating on me. I'm the one. I'm the one. You hurt me. Yeah, I'm the one. Why you always come down on me? Never dealt with it as a child. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you back to say, back to the days when you was out, back in the day when your mama slapped you for no reason. And you that you was like, why she did that? Why she did it? You know, and then you left with doubt. You left with negative feelings that you that you you did something cause you to slap you, but you really did. You got to deal with this trauma as a child. And if many of us have trauma in our childhood, but we've overcome and dealt with it. It's the people that have not overcome and dealt with their trauma in childhood that are acting crazy as adults. Slip going through somebody's phone book. That's just the beginning of the end. Because once you go through the phone book and you find something, then you're gonna go somewhere else. You're gonna check his checking account, check his checkbook, check this, check, and you know, yeah. You know? What you want? You can't never maintain a relationship when you're always negative thinking, lacking a trust, doubt. Uncertainty. They're all cousins and they're related. And when you put them all together, it's strong. And it means negativity. And it means no lasting but end. You want something that's strong in your life, and you find in your relationship with somebody doubting you, whether you're right or whether you're wrong, it doesn't matter. They're doubting you. You don't need that in your life. You know what you need to do? Yeah. Leave unhealthy situations. Walk out the door. Hmm? Never put yourself in a situation where, you, situation where you're causing your joy to be hijacked. That's what happens. You're happy about your relationship with your lady, your lady happy, and next thing you know, you're looking in your phone book, she hacking, hijacking your joy. Oh, you're just feeling good about us, Susan. But now you checking my phone book every day. I come on, what's wrong with you? You happy about the relationship? You like, wow, oh, first lady I ever had. She loving, caring, sharing, trusting. And next thing you know, she's walking through your, or rifling through your phone book every day. Who you been talking to? Susan Lee, please, you ain't got to do me like that. I thought you trusted me. I do trust you, but I have to make sure. If you trust me, you don't have to make sure. I'm doing the right thing. You see what I'm doing? You, you get my drift. It happens every day. And it is unhealthy for you, ladies and gentlemen, when you're dealing with people that got to go through your phone book. And I just broke it down to the root of this distrust, mistrust, doubt, certainty, negativity. And that's not the kind of person I want in my life. I don't want a person that's mistrusted. I don't want a person that hasn't dealt with uh, their childhood trauma, has, a, has attachment issues, don't know how to connect and be a friend to somebody because they remember how they were trying to be a friend to their mom and dad and they came down. I don't, I, you have you got to go back in your life and deal with that issue or you connect with somebody, or you hook up, because your connection will never last. Back to life. It all starts from back in the day, in the day, in the day. What you did to the, in the day is sometimes controlling what you're doing right now. And the problem is, many of us haven't connected the dots. We don't, we don't realize that what you did in your childhood, if it wasn't uh, understood and it wasn't uh, dealt with, will deal with you when you were an adult. I'm telling you right there. 
You think I'm bigging this up? I'm a psychologist, man. I know this stuff. So don't look in that phone for Please. If you want your relationship to last, trust your lady. Lady, don't don't look in your man's phone for Please. If you want your relationship to last, trust your man. Okay? When you don't trust people, that's the beginning of the end. Without trust, you have nothing. Okay? And you should not be together. Trust, distrusting leads to an unhealthy, stinking, funky, rotten, toxic relationship. It may, it may not all come out at one time, but slowly, 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 you're going to break the hell up. I'm sorry, excuse me. You're going to break the H up. Okay? Please understand it is important that you trust unequivocally until you have reason to doubt. Yeah, I said until. I have to put that in there. Until you have reason to doubt. Reason don't mean you think he's doing something. I think, you, I think you're doing something. That's not reason. That's your fictional fantasy mindset. Negative mindset. Reason, reason gives you doubt with who you saw him with another woman. Okay? You have evidence. You have factual evidence. You have no factual evidence. Leave his phone alone. Mister, if you have no factual evidence on that woman, leave her phone. Don't, don't put your negative mindset on her behavior. Until you have some facts, don't do that. You're causing your own relationship to demise. You're self-sabotaging your own self and your relationship. Who wants to be with somebody always doubting you? Nobody. So I want to bring this to you today so you know how to break it down, know how to do what's right, tight, long, strong. Many of you have suffered with this condition many times. You are not about to die. I can tell you, she's about to die. 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 Yeah, but you can tell. But you can, can you not tell also that you're sabotaging your own relationship? Can you not tell also that you have a negative mindset? Can you not tell also that you're full of doubt and uncertainty and that your relationship won't last if you keep doing this to your woman? Same way around women, you're just doing the same thing a man. Can you tell? Huh? Listen to me. If you want a strong relationship, get rid of that checking the phone. That, that childhood, that juvenile, a real man don't need that in his life. Mm -mm. I don't need that kind of woman in my life. No, a real woman don't need that kind of man in, life, in her life. But that's not the way relationships are built. That's not the way relationships prosper and grow. That's the way that relationship begins to uh, crumble. Okay. Get for you, man. So I got for you. We'll ride train day, Bobby DC, one nation of the group. One of the people get ready. But the train is coming, he don't see no ticket. Ah. You just get on board. All you need is love. Woo. Sweet, sweet love. Don't need no ticket. Ah. You just get on board. Get on board. Ah. The red ride train probably leads one nation to run up. When I say to you, you say all of four. When I say all of four, you say all of four. Oh, look, let's ride this train. You're ready, man. Come on, man. I got to find out who's the robber coming up. Pop up enough to be the first man in life. His house. Who that said they going to beat them? So, I need to know, man. Can you tell me, man? I'm gonna drill out here and find out who that is. Who the number one honcho up in this camp for today? I ain't playing with y'all. I ain't playing with y'all. Let's go. Who we got? Pyramids in the house. Pyramids. Pyramids. Let's go, Pyramids. We love trying. What's up? <laughs> we do good. Your friend of me is in the house today. Lee Stig, he's here. He's the number one honcho in the house. He said, "I'm gonna make this train." He said, "I'm gonna make this train today. I don't care. Come, come here. You don't know how water." My I'm gonna make this train. Let's go. Good to see you here. Hey, y'all give me a prop, man. You made it. You were right on time. You, you wasn't a minute late, a minute too early. You was here on time to be the number one hunter. He made history today. Yeah, Karen Mason made history today. He's the first man up on this show today, and there'll never be another first man up on this show today. And there'll never be another time like this, so he made history. Let's go. <laughs> history maker in the house. Let's go. We got Karen Mason. He said, all aboard, two, two, let's ride the train today. Let's go, let's go. Y'all ready? Everybody hit the like button from one time. One, two, three. Hit your fire. One, two, three. Hit, hit your like button, please. Come on, y'all. Let's do this thing right time. Long time. We got Freddie Mason. He said, what's that? You better love train family. Hey, you said some highly flavored and paper. Yeah. Let's go, round train. Who we got? Freddie Mason. Salute to all of them. Thank you so much, Freddie. Salute to all my veterans out there. Say, oh, 
All my veteran out there say, Hoo, let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby, you see one nation of room up? Ready, mate, Bobby, you sound like you're in a bag. <laughs> a big room. I'm sorry, man. I, my, my, my audio, Lisa D did some stuff to my I don't know why she did that stuff, but uh, it's, it's all right now. She did some stuff to the audio, and I didn't know it. Yeah, but anyway, I got it. Okay, let's go, Ryan Train, Bobby, who we got? Ready, mate, Mark is showing off on the love train. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mark is doing it. Hey. You want that kind of stuff every day? Go check out his show, man. Mark, don't be playing. He give you straight information. He give you the yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had his lovely girlfriend Erica on the show today. First time I've ever seen her or met her. Beautiful young lady. And Mark is truly blessed to have somebody he's been with for five years. Can you believe that? I'm saying this is six years, six years, six years, man. That's awesome. That is the genesis of a loving, caring, sharing relationship. Okay, time. Keep telling you guys, you, most of you guys you want to meet somebody one week, two weeks later, you want to go to bed or one week get married. You know, yeah, that's it. That's my woman. Then three weeks later, a month later, you know, I'm broke up. Come on, man. Let's, let's, can we just have some intelligence about us? Can, you, can we just have some maturity about us and, and take our time? I know you want to rush in and this, but somebody said that only fools rush in. Right? I don't want to be, want to see you be a fool. Take your time, man. That's the way to do it. Let's go, Ron Chain. Who we got? Reggie Coleman. Reggie Coleman. What's up, Reggie? You all right, man? So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. I wouldn't want to. Nah, man. What's up, What's up Reggie? He said, I'm not having no one going to my phone. I don't care who it is, male or female. <laughs> this is a big no-no. Anyway, my phone will be locked. You need a pin to get that phone. <laughs> hey, man, that's the way to do it, Reggie. Yeah. Uh, they got to get in your phone, you don't need it. I'm serious. And, and if they can't trust you to be you, why are you jealous? That's the question. Why are you, are you so uh, uncertain, you're so doubtful, and you're so mistrusting that you can't, uh, and you're supposed to be in a relationship with somebody? Now, relationships are built upon what? One of the primary pinnacles of a live, loving, caring, sharing relationship is what? Trust. If you have no trust, you have no relationship. So why are you there? If somebody, if you get in a relationship with somebody say, and she said, let me see your phone. I can tell whether you're lying or not. Yeah. You want to see my what? You know what you're going to tell her to do? Yeah. Get out of my face. We're done. We're done. I'm not going to give you nothing. I don't want you out of my life. Because you don't trust me. And we don't need to be together if you don't trust me. I, don't, I trust you, but you're doubting me. When you find somebody has no trust for you, that means they don't respect you. Believe what you say. Now, now understand you could be lying, but you could be telling the truth, too. But they don't trust you to know if you're telling the truth or not. They're calling you out. And so when somebody uh, accusing you of something without any solid evidence, that means they got some issues up here. And you need to let them go. I'm just bringing it down to straight to the point. Trusting means that something's causing them not to trust you. Childhood trauma, right? Could it be? Yeah. Attachment issues. Could it be? You know, attachment issues, right? They can deal with, deal with how, to, how to connect with people, how to be friends with people, how to relate to each other when they were kids, and they still got the same problem every day. And you, you find out, when you find somebody has 15, 10 women, 10 good boyfriends, and they only like 23, 24, that's an issue right there. What's, why you only got, why you had all them people in your life and you just, so 24 years old. Well, you know, they just, they, I just keep finding the, the, the bad men. You know? What? Something ain't right. And you need to know the step. I'm telling you, man, you just can't let everybody get in your, in your relationship, get in a relationship with everybody. Let's go. Uh, Reggie, call me. He said, and by the way, if she does get into my phone, even attempt to get in my phone, she would be dismissed. Now, out. Next. Yeah. Like this. Next. You out, sister. You had a good thing. You messed it up. Blame it on yourself. I'm not the one that did not, did, I'm not the one that distrusted you. You mistrust me, you distrusted me. You, you're doing it to your own self. You're sabotaging your own relationship. You had a good man here. Now you've got nothing. Find you somebody else to deal with your uh, negative attitude. I'm not the one. So that's how you do. You know, you be strong, you be long. You know, that's not being cruel because you gave her an opportunity to hope with you, to connect with you. And she couldn't deal. And when you find somebody that cannot deal with one aspect of your personality, there may be some other things that she can't deal with too. That's the, 
that's an eye, that should be an eye opener for you. That you have a, that she has an error in her personality. When you find people that have errors in their personality, something caused the error to happen. And that usually plays back to your childhood. And when you find people that have uh, childhood trauma that they have not dealt with, mister, you in trouble. Not trouble, trouble. Let's go round train by releasing one inch man. We're up. Boo, say, what's up, boo? You in the house today? So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. He said, oh, hey, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right, man. Hey, better late than never. You know what I mean? Boo, sound. He has surgery, y'all. Hospital. He's going back for another surgery in the new. It's going to be outpatient surgery this time. Y'all keep praying for him. He's a, 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 one of our subscribers. He's a regular on the show. And we always praying for him because sometimes he has a little bit of illnesses. But you know what, man? The thing about smooth sound, you smooth sounds that you know through all the stuff he goes through, he keeps getting back up, get knocked down, get right back up. Yeah, he's a fighter and he never quit. I, I like people like that because uh, they encourage me that life can throw you a whole lot of punches and beat you down. But you got to just how you deal with your issues in life that determines how you will be in life, that determine how strong you will. That will determine how you if you win or if you lose. Smooth sound is a winner. You know what I mean? Well, how can it be a winner? He always gets sick. He bounces back. You ever seen this little? You remember this time? I don't know. I got a lot of OGs out there. Y'all probably remember this. There was a little uh, toy, right? And this toy was rubber. It was like a, a, a big duck, something like that. And it was just rubber. It had a big belly and a small head. And it would just sit, right? Sit on the floor like that. And then when you try to knock it down, boom, it will bounce right back up. Remember that? Remember that toy? You push it down, it bounce right back up. You push it down, it bounce right back up. Now you could do anything you could. It, it, it would just hit, go down, but it come right back up. That's what we need. That's the attitude we we should have in our life. Anything hit us, we might be, we're not gonna break. We bounce right back up. That's the way I look at smooth sound. He bounces right back up. Let's go around chain. Who we got? Who sound? He congrats, number 12, one, two, and three. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot number two. I forgot to say number two. Who number two? Reggie Coleman, number two. Jeff Walton. Ha ha ha. You gotta be forget, man. All right, who we got? Who's sounding them forget, y'all? All right, who we got? Uh, who? He said, Bobby, you're gonna love my next video. It's called Bobby D. Granny Southern Fried Chicken. <laughs> Granny Southern Fried Chicken. I love some fried chicken. You better put it right. You put my name on it, it better be right. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it back at you, right? Okay, what is this? I've been known to throw food at people that ain't right. I'm telling you, man. You better cook that thing right, man. Put my name on. Let's go, Ron Chain. Who we got? Frederick Mason. What's going on, sir? Pullman. Your eyes on you. What's up? What's up? You good? Frederick Mason in the house. Frederick Mason. What's up? Uh, Spoo. He said, that's all good, Mr. Mason. Man, you all right? You all right? Who said, I said, got these two kids in my heart now. Sometimes next month I will get number three. But the doctor told me to wait six to eight months. Five. Okay. Hey, do what the doctor said. Follow the doctor's orders, and you'll be all right. When you follow all your own orders, you're not a doctor. Sometimes you hurt yourself. So do what your doctor say. We're still praying for you. Ryan Chan, who we got? Barry Mace, your eyes on you. Hope everything goes well for you, my friend. Ryan Chan, who we got? Spoos now. He said, yeah, I hope so too, man. Appreciate that. Barry Mason. He said, Barry Mason on the love train, checking phone records all over the world. When you reach out, touch someone, make sure it's the right one you heard. Me. <laughs> no, that's right. Make sure it's the right one, the tight one, the long one, and the Strong one, yeah, I'm flying. Let's go, round train. Who we got? Move. Now he says six, six officers brought deadly harm to a black man in Memphis are all in jail. Yeah, I heard about that. And I'll be talking about I might do something like that on, on tomorrow. But I, I need to join yes, black on I need black on black all of these. That was a black on black crime, but it's I'm gonna break that down to you. It was black on black crime, but there was other mitigating factors that we need to talk about. Okay, let's go, Ryan. Who we got? Uh, Moo. He said all former president and vice president are now being asked to see if they may have. Hey, that's only totally right. You know, uh, it happens like that sometimes. You know, people don't realize that they got documents that things happen. You know, can you imagine all the Obama might have something sitting up in his closet? <laughs> Although, although the legal make a search, let's go. I don't think it's a problem with it. Let's search them, search them all. 
Uh, Market, what's up, man? You good? You good? Check out Market. Check out his channel. Ryan J. Bobby, who we got? Market, he's a wow, This world is going crazy with all the shooting crimes. On Sunday. Every time we turn around, it's a mass shooting. It's a mass shooting. It's a mass shooting. What are we going to do? What is the solution to mass shootings in America? Some people say take all the guns, make guns illegal. No, I, I, I don't think they're going to do it. Because if all guns were illegal, how would you protect yourself when a bad guy comes kicking your door down? Yeah? Yeah? What are you going to do? Holland said, can you call the popo, please? No, you know, blowing you away. Take everything you got. You got so guns, we need we need some type of self-protection. We need to be, and you know, the, the Constitution guarantees us the right to do what? Bear on. Okay? So ain't nothing wrong with that. We need a, a re-education of how we should bear on. Constitution does not mention how we should bear arms, does it? And it does not mention that when we bear arms, we just go out, we don't go out and take out somebody for no reason. It does. Does it say that? I, I, I don't agree that. But so, uh, it, it is important that we get a re education on how to handle a weapon, when we should handle a weapon, why we should handle a weapon, and that it should only be for self defense, not taking out another person's life. So, Constitution may need some amendments. Let's go around chain. Who we got? Mark Allen, um, smooth down. He said, Mark Allen, I sent over your way. I sent over your way. Who's having rent problems? But I think he's on your part. What? In a vet. Okay, a vet. I sent a vet to your way. Who's having rent problems? But I think he's on your podcast channel. Okay. Roger, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Freddie Mason, he said, "What's up, Mark Allen? Hey, man, I got to go. Give me a little break. I'll be right back." Okay, go leave. I'll be right back. too much stuff today, y'all. I'll be right back, guys. Thank Up. Where you want? Guys, excuse me. Excuse me, wait till I got through. Josh, you done me? I apologize, y'all. I drank too much. I had I had uh, green tea this morning, and then this tea gave me some smoothie, and then I drank a cup of coffee. So that's what they have. I'm sorry. All right, let's go. We got uh what was uh okay. What's up, Mark L. Frederick Mason? Mark L said, Oh, thank you, Mr. Brown. I'm doing good. Ryan Chain by the Leafy One Nation. Mark L. Hello, Mr. Mason. What's up, man? Ryan Chain, Frederick Mason, wake up, Lee G. Time to take the donuts. <laughs> to make the donuts. <laughs> Okay, at least your friend of me cracked on you. What you gonna do? Nothing? <laughs> Let's go, Ryan J. Uh, Freddie Mason. She said, at least he put the tuba down. <laughs> hey, that's what she That's what she was doing, man. That's why she didn't get up when like I told her, I said, go and sit down until I get back. She wouldn't even do it. She said, no, they're drinking that tuba. Leave that tuba alone, Lisa. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, guys. I got 
Ray Cup solo. So Ray Solo come. Let's see. Ray Cup solo. I think she'll get it sooner or later. It may be later, but she'll get it. <laughs> okay, guys, this is the realest, the realest reveal. We got to go. Everybody hit the uh, like button for me, please. If you have done that, just go ahead and hit that like button real quick. Thank Mark L for showing up today. Thank you all for showing up today, being a part of the train. It's a blessing to come out and know that you have people that will participate in the program. And it's also best to know that people hear and share with you on this train. Okay, that's it for now. Let's see. Uh, you got anything, Sally Lisi? Why we what we move about it? Huh? She's quiet now, y'all. She done. She like to talk in the background. When I asked her, she had something to say. She said, "Thank you for showing up." That's it. <laughs> All right, guys. This is real. This is real. Real. This is Bobby D. And leave Lisa D, the super queen, in the background. Saying, "Take care." God bless and peace.